Anyway. Hey guys, Rob here with McDojo Life. I am really excited. I actually, I've been talking to our next guest for a while now about his upcoming film. And I, I guess when we were speaking, I really didn't have a grasp on how big or how um, until I actually started speaking with him and when I, uh, until like recently I realized how big his film is going to be, which is really impressive. I got to watch a sneak peek of the movie today. Um, very excited to talk about it. Riley Stearns is on with us today, writer and director of Art of Self-Defense. How's it going, man? Man, great. It's, uh, it's going great. And I, I appreciate the support you've been giving us, uh, over the past couple of months and, uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome to finally have the movie out and people can kind of see what it is. Like you said, nobody really knew exactly what I was talking about or a lot of people didn't know just like what we were trying to do. And now that it's finally come out or on Friday, it'll be out in more places. Uh, it's really cool to finally have people say, wait, that was what you were making? Like, that's what you were doing? So it's nice. I like it. Yeah, it threw me off because, you know, like, you know, I got I got a lot of people to follow my page and like, hey, I'm making a movie. Will you like share sure. my phone? You know, that kind of thing. I'm like, sure, I don't care. Um, but I got to see the movie today and I got to say I was super, super impressed. Um, you know, obviously the casting you did a really good job on. I was talking to one of your guys earlier. You have Steve Tarada in the movie, who is a fucking legend in sport martial arts. Also, like a legend in dance. Like this dude's yeah, a yeah. talented guy. Uh, your fight choreographer, Mindy is incredible and she did such a good job about doing the choreography for the the fight scenes because she herself super talented martial artist she could have overdone it easily if she wanted yeah. to but kept it fairly realistic to what a real karate thing was like so how did you wind up getting the idea for this movie uh, I mean, it started off, I've been training jujitsu now for six years uh, under a couple of different instructors, but I'm currently under a Henzo affiliate. And, but when I was writing the script, I had been training for two years and I really just liked the idea of setting something in the world of martial arts, uh, but I knew that I wasn't gonna do a traditional narrative in that space. If I was gonna do something in that space, I wanted it to, to say something more than just like kind of what you've already seen before. Uh, and I started kind of implementing my thoughts and fears of like why I started jujitsu. Like I was afraid I was, I didn't want to get in a fight. And if I did, I knew I was going to get my ass kicked. And um, I also I, I had this like thing that I think a lot of guys have where you're sort of afraid and, tim and intimidated by other men, especially men who you think are like uh, more masculine or tougher than you. And, and so I, uh, I, I just started putting those ideas into this karate movie and it really shaped it into something a little different than I think people are used to, which is exciting for me. I wanted to say something else. Yeah, definitely. And it's not what I expected at all. Like I, you know how some movies, when you watch the trailer, you know exactly what the movie's going to be about. And you're like, well, fuck, I shouldn't have watched the movie. I should have just watched the trailer again, you know? But like, this movie's not like that. I did not expect it to take such a, it's, it's a dark comedy. And what I mean by dark comedy is there, it's definitely touches on a lot of stuff that I touch on on the page. It talks about, cult like mentalities of instructors and how powerful that can really be. It talks about how, um, you know, you can take like some of these really negative connotations out of like people's personalities. And if you just dump that into somebody with a lot of cult of personality, they can really control you in a big major way. So how, was that based off of a real person or was that something you just kind of made up or was that experiences? Uh, I, my first feature, Faults, is about getting somebody out of a cult. It's about a cult deprogramming. And I really felt like I still had like things that I wanted to say in that space as well. So uh, the first thing is about getting somebody out. I figured why not kind of explore how somebody gets indoctrinated into a cult-like uh, uh, organization. And in a weird way, martial arts tend to have like all the same like, sort of... Uh, uh, touchstones that a cult might have. It's just that you're used to seeing it used in a positive way. So like everyone shows up, they they wear the same uniform, they uh, all listen to one instructor and like that instructor's uh, voice is usually the only thing that you hear and you pay to be there and there's levels. You're like gaining your belt uh, uh, belts as you go through it. And all of those things feel like a cult in many ways, but we're all doing it because we wanna be there. We wanna like better ourselves. But if you've got this instructor who is kind of drunk on power or lets their ego take over, you can start seeing these like, I don't know, uh, darker turns. And, and you post a lot of stuff on your page where people believe their own bullshit uh, and you don't have a lot of people who are like calling them out. But I think more and more we're starting to see people be outed for for that kind of stuff. I just I feel like it's it's so it's it, 
I feel bad for the people who are involved in that kind of thing, who like get sucked into it because all they want to do is is better themselves. But there's other people taking advantage of them. And we just took that to the extreme in this movie. We really like just said what it's its own world. What's the worst that could happen? And let's go there. So that that was kind of the intent, but not based on a real person. Yeah. OK, I got you. Well, you know, it's funny because like when I was watching it, like I can. I, I've probably met a hundred people like the instructor, <laughs> you know, sure. so you wrote them very well. So I thought it was based <laughs> off of a person. Now, yeah. one thing that I, that stands out like a sore thumb to me in the movie in a good way, nothing but a good way is the fact that it's quite obviously written by somebody who's been in the martial arts. I mean, it's, if you've ever been like taken martial arts, there are certain things that are just like, they stick out to you. Like for instance, no shoes on the mat is a big kind of a running gag in the in the in the movie, and it kind of has a great. I have to say, it's got a great couple bits in there about no shoes on the mat, which I enjoy. Okay. Oh, um, you. you know the the rule set rule list on the wall. You know that's a very subtle thing. Where in martial yeah. arts, most studios have like a rule list. So, did you draw anything else from personal martial arts experience other than like the shoes on the mat and stuff like that, or? I mean, I, I put little nods to the fact that I train in there. Like even even every single person's first class, they go and they tie their belt from behind and it's super, super long. Yeah. And there's always somebody where you're like, oh, that your first class, huh? And then <laughs> the person's like, yeah, yeah. And you go, okay, well, I'll, sh I'll help you tie your belt. I'll help you show or help show you how to do that. So like there's things like that that are, are I guess, kind of indications to people either that I train or kind of little in jokes for people who do train, but I didn't want it to feel like it was impenetrable to somebody who doesn't. So there are little nods, but I don't think they take away or like if you don't understand those little ends, you're not missing anything necessarily. But uh, it's funny watching this film with jujitsu people because like they'll, or, or martial arts people in general, they'll pick out little things, little details. Jiu-Jitsu people especially love the Barambolo that we put in the film. Yeah, I, I did like, notice that, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's funny, like, like just little nods like that. It's almost like if you're in a rock band and you you say, hello, Houston, and like the, the crowd cheers or whatever. Like yeah. you, it's an easy uh, applause for you. If you throw a Barambolo in a movie for jujitsu people, they're gonna they're gonna cheer for you. So yeah. Well, one, one thing I really loved is it's very self-deprecating, but it almost creates its own world in the fact that uh there, the, one of the bits, the ongoing bits as well, it talks a lot about um, punching with your feet and kicking with your hands, which is, yeah. it itself is a hilarious bit to me. But, you know, when it says that, you are the you get the idea that the guy's going along with it. He's like, yeah, that makes total sense. And you can't quite tell if he's being sarcastic, but then as you watch the movie, you're like, oh, that's him actually it, agreeing. Yeah, yeah, it, it, was, it, was, uh, it was the idea that, I didn't, I never wanted this to feel like it was uh, a dojo that didn't really teach real things, but I wanted it to be stylized and like just ever so slightly hyper real. And that was the intense was like, at first you're like, is this legit? Like, is this like in this world that it must be a McDojo y type of thing. But I think at, when it comes back later on in the movie, you're like, oh no, it's real. Like you can really tell the difference between a yeah. kick with a fist or a kick with a foot. Uh, and that, that was just like this world building thing that I wanted to do. Yeah. And you did a really good job because at first I'm like, oh, it's like their own, um, version of reality almost sure. like they're all in their own little bubble in this dojo and that is real to them, but to the outside world, it's not. But then he winds up talking to a doctor later on in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of, it kind of solidifies yeah. like, no, the entire world is built this way. <laughs> and there's things that happen in the movie, like I think pretty early on, even with the way that the voice, or his uh, answering machine talks to him, uh, it's kind of like condescending and beating him down even a little bit, it's like super subtly, but it, it helps create the idea that this is its own space and it doesn't exist in our exact world. Um, mm -hmm. And then later on in the movie, like he karate chops a car mirror off, but then he runs back and he does something else that in our world wouldn't work, but in this world yeah. it does. And it's just like, yeah, amping it up a little bit as the film goes along. Yeah, I thought I thought you did a really good job of that. And plus, it kind of had a feel of. I almost felt like this was a movie that was taking place in the in the two thousands, but it was also um, stuck in the eighties. If mm -hmm. that makes any sense at all, like yeah, when it feel timeless. Yeah, like like uh, the technology tends to straddle different eras, mm -hmm. and there's no cell phones, there's no like internet or anything like that. And it was mainly just to make it feel like its own world. But then hopefully as a byproduct of that, 10 years from now, if somebody watches this movie, if, if I'm so lucky, 
uh, they're going to not really be able to date it. Like it, it's not something where they're going to see a, an iPhone seven and say that came out in 2015 or whatever it is. They're going to, it's just going to feel like it exists in its own time period. And that would, that was well, the hope. It's, I'll definitely be watching it in 10 years. Cause I am, I'm oh, a martial right. arts nerd and I love little gems like this. And I think that it did, you did a fucking fantastic job. Thanks, man. Me movie and it was very well written it was very well scripted and i have to say it was very well acted uh, i was talking to somebody earlier today i guess it's one of your liaisons or whatever and we just got chit chatting but uh uh jesse eisenberg does a really good job because you can almost take the character that he plays in this mm -hmm. and so, if you read it on paper at least you could take the character that he plays on this and compare it to the character that he plays in zombie land but with the same, you know, unassured, unassured, like no confidence thing. But he plays it so different. Yeah. There, did you have to give him any direction for that, or did he just figure that out on his own? Well, I mean, the the script kind of speaks for itself in some ways, but I think I had to push him a little further than he even knew that we wanted to go. Uh, the the dialogue is so stylized and heightened at times that if you say it a certain way, like if you said it like a joke it wouldn't work. Like it, it, it almost would be like adding something on top of something that was already big. And at that point it just like crumbles under its own weight. We really wanted every single bit of dialogue, especially the really heightened stuff to be delivered as like fact. Like the person who's saying it has this earnestness and um, I don't know, like believability behind it. And that they're not lying to you when they say something crazy. Uh, and and that was that was important for us. It was very black and white. There's no gray area. Everything's literal. It's exactly what a person's thinking. Um, so if you go about reading the dialogue that way, I think all the the it tonally starts kind of connecting, and performances from other actors match with uh, each other. And it's a very delicate tightrope that I was trying to walk, but uh, I, the actors pull it off in a way that. Uh, I, I'm just so grateful that they trusted me to to really push it because it, it's definitely stylized. Did you expect it to do as well? I mean, obviously, it's going to be open. That was this Friday coming out. This Friday, it'll be more nationwide. You know, yeah, more people will be able to see it. Um, it's in select theaters now, but I mean, on Rotten Tomatoes, your score is way up. I yeah. mean, I personally, am probably one of those people that's going to put it way up on my list of martial arts movies. Probably one of my favorite because I love movies in the martial arts that talk about. The stupid day, to, the stupid day to day stuff, the paperwork, sure. you know, the it's running a small business, that, you know, I love that stuff. Yeah, it's real. You know, did you expect it to be do as well as it um, has? Well, I knew that having Jesse involved, Jesse Eisenberg involved, was was a big get for us. Uh, and then Bleecker Street's our distributor, and they release big, bigger indie movies, and and they do a good job. But I don't think that until I saw it at South by Southwest with a an audience, and that was the first time we saw it finished. That was where we premiered. I don't think I expected it to get quite the response that it's gotten. And it's a really humbling feeling of being like, I knew I made a movie that I liked and I knew that people that I'd shown it to liked it as well, but it felt more like it was gonna be a divisive thing. Like it wasn't gonna be for everybody. And granted, it's not for everybody. I don't think that any movie ever should be for everyone or else you're going to lose potential viewers. Like you, I would rather make something that's very personal and not everyone gets it than to make something where you're just trying to please everybody. But uh, I, I don't know, Rotten Tomatoes is such a funny thing because you can never know what a score is gonna be. But in my mind, I kept thinking, we're gonna be in like the high 60s, low 70s. That's like ultimate, that would be great. And that would be like a sign that it worked for a lot of people, but then some people would just like, it's too far for them, uh, but that's good. We're, I think right now, currently at 88. The other day we're at 92 and uh, I, I'm, I would have been thrilled no matter what, but it's, it's really blown me away how high that score has been. And I, I don't really care about the score, but at the same time you have to, because down the line when people are watching uh, like movies on iTunes, I know that I'm one of those people that kind of looks at the score that they put next to your rental and says, do I want to watch the one that's like in the eighties or do I want to watch the one that's in the forties? Like that's a no brainer sort of thing. So yeah. it helps down the line. Hopefully we'll get more viewers because of it. Uh, but yeah, I've been blown away to say the least. Well, you got nothing but support for me. I'll try to push it out as much as I can, especially oh, yeah. now that I've seen it. I know it's not a big turd. I know it's a great movie. So, you know, yeah, it's funny. Like, it, it's, a martial, it's a movie that takes place in the world of martial arts, but it's not a martial arts movie. And it's not like that. I'm trying to say that, uh, like it's above that, but it definitely like it just happens to be set in that world, and we explore things other than that. So it's been, I think, it, re it related to people more than I was thinking who don't train uh, than I was expecting. Like that, that's been a really positive kind of plus. Uh, but then, like we were talking about earlier, I think that you'll be able to see 
some like in jokes for people who do train. Oh, there was tons of them. So I was, I was thinking about like Easter eggs. So I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will say, um, I want to kind of get back to your stuff a little bit. You know, I know you got the movie coming out and you've had a uh, fairly good success with your previous film. And it seems like obviously that this is going to lead to nothing but great things for you because it's a really good movie. So, you know, it's going to lead to even bigger and better projects for you and stuff like that. But, you know, you started martial arts and this is a martial arts type interview, podcast, whatever sure. you call it. <laughs> um, so what made you personally start martial arts and how long ago did you start training? So I, like I was saying earlier, I've been training for six years now, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, I am a purple belt under Sean Williams, who's a Henzo Gracie black belt. And I actually just finished training right before this. I just showered and like popped down and now I'm doing the interview. And uh, yeah, I, I started I started initially thinking about training because I, I was watching MMA, but kind of in, anytime somebody would come in uh, and, and see it all, like I would change it right away because I felt like it was something that I wasn't supposed to be watching. Like I tend to be like sort of intellectual about the way that I watch things. Like I'm, I'm trying, I'm not like, I don't know. I felt like I was watching something that bros were allowed to watch or like jocks were allowed to watch, but I wasn't allowed to. And I felt kind of embarrassed by it. And then I started, and the more that I watched, the more that I realized that there was way more subtlety going on. These people are athletes. It's a sport. There's technique involved. And that really surprised me, but also excited me. And it, mainly when the fight would go to the ground, I just loved that there were these guys who were in girls who seemed like they were smaller or less athletic in some ways, but they would be submitting people. And I had no idea what this thing was. Come to find it's jujitsu. And I was like, I'm training jujitsu. That's what I want to do. Uh, it took me three years from that kind of realization that I had before I, from that point to walking through the doors for the very first time, because I was super intimidated. I was sure that I was going to walk into this Gracie Baja that I started at, and there were going to be all these guys who all they want to do was kill me, and they're fighters, and I'm not a fighter. And then when I walked through the door finally, and I watched a class and then signed up at the end of it, I saw that it was like dads, it was teenagers, it was uh, women who are like doctors or whatever, like every type of uh, lifestyle, uh, gender, uh, uh, body type. That was super, super cool for me to be like, oh, wait, they were all here at one point. They probably all felt that intimidation and fear. Uh, and I, I had a couple of years where I was training more like two to three times a week tops. Uh, and then a, a few years back, I went to New York and lived there for about five months while my ex shot this TV show there. And I, I trained at Marcelo Garcia's Academy. Um, and for people who know, like Marcelo's one of the greats of all time and his Academy was so amazing and they took care of anybody who's there, even if you're a visitor for one day or you train there every single day, Marcelo comes in and shakes your hand personally and just says, welcome. Uh, and that really changed my perspective on training. I started going five times a week. I got more into no gi as opposed to gi. And uh, when I came back to LA after that, I tried to find something more along those lines, particularly with Nogi. And that's how I found Five Star Martial Arts, which is Henzo Gracie LA. And I started getting into leg locks and, and that's kind of been my jam. So I tr still train the Gi, but Nogi is my preference. Which is funny because you were out there in New York and Henzo's main studio was out there in New York. So you well, were- I wasn't with Henzo yet. At yeah, the time. exactly. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was Gracie Baja and, and uh, now if I go back to New York, like. Henzo's Blue Basement, that's where I'm going to be, uh, obviously. But uh, Marcelo's Academy still took care of me. And, and I always like feel a kinship to the people who train there. That was that was a great experience. Yeah, man, yeah, you're in with good company, to say the least. You know, <laughs> and Marcelo Garcia. And like all those guys are obviously animals, but they are the nicest human beings on the totally. planet. Totally. And Sean's the, the same way here in L.A. Like if anybody's ever in L.A., come train at Five Star because we, we'd love to have you. Yeah, that's awesome. And then uh, actually, uh, you have uh, – Jean Jacques studio is out there in LA as well. So um, I mean, Southern California in general is an oasis for jujitsu athletes. Like I, whether you're a hobbyist or somebody who takes it a little bit more seriously or a professional, we've got a million different school options and especially you go down to San Diego and it just be, widens even more. So yeah, I'm very, very fortunate to train where I do. And I feel like I've got a good relationship with a lot of schools. So uh, I can travel and, and train at another place, whether it's in LA or in another state. Or even when I was in Paris recently, I trained at a, a school there. And it's just fun being able to like, I don't know, even if you don't speak the same language, be able to say, like, I understand the same techniques as you. And we don't have to speak the same language to know how to roll. So that's that's been really fun. Yeah, it's always just high five, bump knuckles and get to work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 
I'm curious though, because you said that, you know, you started off in Gracie Baja. So Gracie Baja is a primarily Gi studio, um, yeah. you know, probably one of the top teams when it comes to Gi, um, yeah. or at least the largest to tell you the yeah, truth. Definitely a big organization. Yeah. Um, you know, and of course they have their hands in like IBJJF and stuff like that. You know, if Gracie Baja, Gracie Academy, those are giant organizations. Yeah. But then you said you went to Marcelo Garcia's studio and I'm not saying taking anything away from Marcelo Garcia, but it is a fairly smaller organization, although he's probably one of the best in the damn world, yeah. um, if not the best. So what was the moment defining for you when you were like, you know what? Nogi is a little bit more my style. What made you have that decision? Why well, done? So the Gracie Baja in Glendale that I was training at is a great academy. Uh, Robert Hill runs it and he's a, a fantastic black belt, but there, there aren't a lot of competitors at that school. And I'm not a competitor in the sense that I compete all the time, but I, I do compete here and there. Uh, and at Marcello's, I was training alongside people that competed all the time. And it up my game, I started realizing that I could stay in the entire class. Whereas at Gracie Baja, there would be times where I'd be like, oh, I'm tired and I'd sit out and you know, like in between rounds. And I didn't really have that same experience at Marcello's. It really pushed me in a different way. And it was um, it was the way that he trains his nogi that like, so Gracie Baja, uh, I think at that time they were doing one nogi class every two weeks. Mm -hmm. I just didn't get the chance to really vibe with it. Whereas at Marcello's, Every day you can train gi or no gi. It's actually a policy um, for for Gracie Baja as a franchise yeah. that um, it's like I think eighty percent of your program has to be gi. So yeah. if you add like a kickboxing class, then you have to take away a no gi class. Or so it's a it's a policy to keep uh, standards up yeah. for what they want for their studio. So that's interesting. Yeah. And and Marcelo uh, still runs his academy where you don't do leg reaping. Leg locks are, are for brown belts and up. And so there was kind of like a middle ground between Gracie Baja and now Henzo. Mm -hmm. uh, but once I left New York and I came back here, I was like, I mean, I'd been watching the Dan Her Death Squad guys just like tear through everybody. And even though I knew that I wanted to be able to attack the entire body, I did want to work on leg locks more because I, I had already felt like my straight ankle was good. And because of Marcelo's Academy, I started using uh, Ashi more and, and, and single leg X, out, what they call single leg X. And it really just was like, just primed me for wanting more of that. So when I got to LA, I went and tried a class at uh, Cobrinas, which is another Alliance uh, gym like Marcelo's. Uh, didn't feel as much of a kinship with them and a connection. And then I went down the street to Sean's school and it was just like, I found my home. And so been training consistently ever since. I compete uh, predominantly no gi, but I do IBJJF and uh, uh, other like sub only types of stuff, uh, Naga. Uh, but the last competition I did was Worlds uh, in December in no gi at Purple Belt. And I got silver in my division. I'm, I'm in the master's category, nice. master's one. But like I, I went up against good dudes and had a good time and and like ended up leaving uh, with a couple of submissions. One went over on, on points and then got beat in the finals by a stronger player, which was just oh, like yeah. I still felt really good about everything. Yeah, hell yeah. You made it to the finals and, and IBJJF Worlds. Like, come yeah. on. Like, that's Master's a one, man. Matt, yeah. it's not like I'm, I'm Master's three or something yet, but like. Yeah, I, 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 one day I would like to try an adult category and just like push myself. But with scheduling right now, it's it's been tricky to be able to like really devote all my time to training. Uh, so Masters 1 is, is like as close as I'm going to get for now. Yeah, man. Well, it's all about enjoying the damn thing anyway. Totally. It's fun no matter what. You know, so I am curious. So back to the movie, cause I, I could talk martial arts shop all day, but I definitely oh. want to make sure that people uh, kind of get a little bit more information about the movie. So you are having to do a lot of traveling currently. I guess we're promoting the movie. So yeah. what what traveling and promotions do you have coming up for the movie? Uh, well, I've been all over the place. Uh, just recently, Jesse and I went to Munich uh, Film Festival and we opened Munich Film Festival. Like we were the opening film, which was mind blowing because they had like dignitaries there and the mayor of Munich came out and there was, it was just like this big pomp and circumstance. No and then I went to Korea right after that, straight from Munich and, and we played it there to a very different crowd that like it was more of a genre crowd and they dug it. And then I'm back here, did the premiere in New York. And now that it's out in theaters, uh, this week I go, in a couple of days, I go to uh, San Antonio to do a couple of Q and A's at an Alamo Draft House. Austin after that for a couple of days. And I'm from Austin, so that'll be nice. I'll get to see my parents. Uh, and then after that, I think I get to take a little bit of a breather other than some international festivals here and there. Uh, and I'm really excited because I've, I've written something else and that's gonna kind of start 
really moving along more in earnest now that this film is like finally slowing down and being its own thing. Uh, but it's, it's honestly, it's exciting no matter what. I'll go anywhere people ask me to go as long as I can. And uh, I mean, it's, it's my baby. I wrote and directed this thing. So I, I only, only want to help it in any way I can. So uh, yeah, it's, it's tiring, but it's, it's a good kind of tiring. So I've been uh, writing and working on a documentary for like the last five years, pretty much what McDojo Life is, is it's sure. like the basis of what a documentary is going to be. And uh, I've gone to create, do you have any advice <laughs> on how to make something like that successful? Cause it's been something that I finally got into pre-production currently. We, we filmed a little bit and now we have enough for a sizzle reel. So any advice that you can give me on making this thing work well? Man, I mean, documentaries are a whole different animal. I, I, I would say that my biggest advice for people making narratives is to make a lot of shorts before you make your feature. Um, but then documentary wise, I mean, I, I think the thing that translates from narrative to docs is believing in what you're doing, um, taking advice from other people that you trust and people who've been there before and uh, not getting too hung up on whether it gets into festivals or not, because you can never really know what a festival is looking for or what their kind of like vibe is that year. Uh, just trust that if you made something good and from your heart, it will get into some stuff. And uh, you've already got your built in audience. You're ahead of the game in a lot of ways. Uh, just make sure that you make the movie that you want to make. That's, that's yeah. a good thing. Well, I think it's shit, so that's not a problem. <laughs> um, you know, but I am, I am very impressed. I'm impressed with the movie. I'm really excited about it. I know that, uh, you know, I had a great opportunity. Thank you guys, by the way, for letting me catch a little sneak. I'm glad food. you got to check it out. Yeah, yeah. It was so good. I, I watched it here at my house and my dog was bugging the shit out of me, but I did get a chance to sit down and watch the whole thing. And uh, I, I got to say, if anybody out there is watching that now, if you get the opportunity to see it in film while it's in theaters, you should yeah. go to this movie in theaters because I think there are certain movies that you don't need to see in theaters, to be honest. Like, to me, there are certain big blockbuster movies that you want to see in theaters because of the effects. Or yeah. there are movies that come out like Forrest Gump where you're like, this is such a dramatic, or Titanic, such a dramatically good movie portrayed by such good actors you want to watch that. And I have to say that this movie is probably one of the most unique films I've ever seen based off of the acting and trying to dissect some of the meanings behind the pace, the cadence, the tempo in which people are speaking, why they're speaking that way. Uh, I have to say Jesse Eisenberg really did a fucking amazing job yeah. for you guys and the fact that he acted his ass off in that movie and it was very well done. And I have to say, man, it takes, it takes a really dark turn. What made you decide that with this movie to go darker with it? Because you really didn't have to. I mean, it seemed like it was yeah. very purposefully done. Well, I, I feel like you've you've seen the traditional martial arts film a million times and you've seen like even a, a sports movie in general, like it could be about wrestling or football or whatever it is. The person's beaten down in the beginning. They find that passion and that new thing that is making them a better person. And in the end, they overcome uh, insurmountable odds and defeat the person who's been doing it longer or is better. Or even if they don't win, they learn a lesson in the process. I wanted people to think that they were watching that movie and then halfway through the movie go, what the fuck is happening? Like that, that was, I, it's at the, uh, at the end of the day, it's a dark comedy. Uh, and I really wanted to push that. Uh, and I think that you were saying something about the trailer earlier, which if you watch the trailer, I think a lot of people think that they know, and somebody's saying like, they like the trailer, that's rad. Yeah. If you think you like, like know what the movie is gonna be based off the trailer, it takes turns that you're not expecting. And that's important to me. And uh, I think that our marketing team did a great job of, I think bringing people in who may either just like not know that they're like, th this may not be totally their film or they don't think it is, but it's gonna take turns that surprise them and I think excite them. And the main reason that I would say that I would love for people to see this in a theater and like a packed theater is that it's, I hope it's pretty funny there are moments in the movie that people flat out applaud uh, because it's just like this communal experience. And when other people are laughing, it kind of like, I don't know, it, it changes the room and maybe you would laugh at something that you wouldn't totally get before. It's a fun movie to watch with a crowd. And, and I've just been really, uh, yeah, really, really lucky to be able to see it play in front of lots of different types of audiences. And uh, yeah, any, anybody who can make it to the theater and see it, I, I would really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. I know you got a lot going on. I'm really excited that this is coming out on Friday because I think it's a movie that more people need to see. And I got to say, like, um, 
one thing that I think is super important for people to understand is it does touch on a lot of things that if you watch my page, you'll be like, oh shit, that's a little creepy because it's just truth. And uh, yeah. you know, like I, we talked about it earlier, but it just talks a lot about the power of somebody with some fucking confidence around yeah. people who don't really have any. And yeah. How, and know, another big thing for me too that I'll say, because I think it relates to kind of the stuff that you post I think a lot in, in my movie, the sensei character, I like to think that outside of the dojo, he's just as like made fun of and unsure of himself around other people. And his karate, his like black belt doesn't mean anything when he's on the streets. And he's he's still kind of a dorky dude. But inside the dojo, he gets to be this persona, this like larger than life figure and have people look up to him. And he really is like feeding off of that. And I think in real life, that's what ends up happening with a lot of these people. They're in a lot of ways, like they're out of shape or, and, or they like learned an art that really doesn't do that much for them outside in the real world, but they believe it so much and, and want to believe it and mainly want other people to believe it. And, and like they're, they're thriving on that power. So uh, I think if you look at the videos on McDojo Life and you're entertained or, or like unfortunate, like, like fascinated more so than entertained. Uh, I think that there's a lot in this as well that kind of relates to that. But I don't think at the end of the day, he's running McDojo. Uh, it just happens to be weird and dark in its own way. And, and there are weird techniques and stuff. But, um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully people dig it. Yeah, man, I, I gotta say, I'm personally a fan. And I am, I am very grateful to be able to have seen it so soon. And I'm looking forward to seeing it. I actually see it this week or not this weekend. Yeah, this weekend in theaters. Uh, so I'll see it twice. So I'll, I'll see yeah, it. awesome. And it, it's it's going to be in over 500 theaters this this week. So anybody who's curious to uh, to see where it's playing, uh, Bleecker Street, our distributor, their website. If you go there and you click on our movie, it'll show literally every theater uh, showing the film. So there will be ways to see this movie. I guarantee. Yeah, definitely. And you know, if you're in, you're definitely if you're in Jacksonville, it's almost playing in every theater here in Jacksonville. So I get to pick which one I want. So that's pretty cool. Um, awesome. So, before we head out, if you want to plug absolutely anything, please do so right now. Let people know how they can find out more about the movie, where they can find it, social media. Is anything you need to tell them, tell them right now. How can they find awesome. out more? I mean, the first thing I'll say is it's a very annoying uh, thing sometimes, but Instagram has been a really great way for me to relate to people and uh, kind of have conversations here and there. So Riley Stearns on Instagram. And then definitely come train at Five Star Martial Arts. We love visitors and we love... Like if you like leg locks, if you like, uh, I don't know, being technical, if you love no gi, if you love gi, we got it all. Like it's, it's a fun school and I love training with new people and meeting new people. Uh, so, so yeah, those two things would be what I would, I would say. And also hopefully you get to see the movie as well. Yeah, definitely. And there, uh, I'm going to add one, two, two little notes to the end of that. Right. Um, Mindy Kelly, I do believe Mindy Kelly. the uh, fight choreographer for this and she did a amazing job. So you can also check her out on her Instagram. And also Steve Tarala, who is a fucking legend. He's a legend in the martial arts, man. He's, he's a great dancer, a great fighter. He also plays a pretty good role in the movie as well. He's a, he's a fun actor, and he, and he also does a little bit of trick karate stuff in the movie too. So so if you're a fan of what he does uh, in competitions, we had him do a little bit of that as well in the film. So it's yeah, it was a good nod to a lot of different martial arts, and I think you did a wonderful job with that. So thank you, man. Thank you again for your time. Uh, if you guys get the chance out there in Instagram, YouTube, virtual reality world, please take the time to go watch The Art of Self-Defense. It is fantastic. I really enjoyed watching it. I, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you think a lot about how people treat you. And I also think that it's going to open your eyes a little bit to a different style of telling a story because I haven't seen too many stories Thank you. that were told in this way. So it's done really well. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Awesome, man. Well, take care. Thanks again for having me. All right, man. Have a great day. You too.